and welcome to the Movie Explainer. Today we will recap a 2017 thriller survival film about two sisters who become entrapped in a pool and survive for three days. Stay with us until the end of the video to learn more about the film. The film begins with a young woman named Bree swimming in a public pool. She gets out of the pool and checks her blood sugar, which shows she is a diabetic patient. She removes her engagement ring and places it in her bag. Following that, she jumps back into the pool. McGrady, the manager of the swimming pool, posts a written statement on the notice board, informing everyone that the pool will be closed in the coming days due to extended holidays. When he walks into the staff room, he notices that the pool's caretaker, Clara, is stealing money from the lost and found apartment. Even though it's her third theft from the lost and found apartment, McGrady only issues a warning instead of taking strict action. Jonna, Bree's younger sister, arrives and joins her in the pool. They have a good time until McGrady orders the swimmers to leave. Bree notices her ring is missing as she is wrapping things up. She tells Jonna about it, and they begin frantically searching for the ring. Jonna notices the ring stuck to the metal gate inside the pool. When Bree notices the ring, she dives into the water to retrieve it, and Jonna follows her. The ring became stuck in such a clumsy way that even after pulling it with all her might, she was unable to extract it. The manager believes everyone has left, so he presses the button to cover the pool, which will be closed for a few days. Because the pool is about to be covered up, both sisters attempt to return to the surface, but it is too late since the pool has already been covered by fiberglass. They start shouting in the hope that someone will hear them, but in vain. Jonna becomes deeply worried that she will perish in the pool, but Bree reassures her that they will be out soon. She, on the other hand, continues to yell at her for putting their lives at risk for a ring. Bree informs her that it is an engagement ring from David and that they will soon marry. Following this discussion, they decide to explore the entire pool for any weak spots in the fiberglass, but all they find is a small hole that even a hand cannot pass through. Jonna loses hope and tells Bree that she threw her ring in the pool because she is jealous of her lifestyle while she is in a drug rehab center for rehabilitation. Bree becomes enraged upon hearing this, but quickly realizes that it is a waste of time and that they must do something to get out of the pool. She goes deep again to try to pull the ring out of the metal gate, and this time she succeeds. She then attempts to remove the metal gate to gain access to an exciting path, but the gate is too heavy for her to move. Time passes quickly, and it is nearly nighttime, but no one has arrived to rescue the girls. The situation worsens when Bree develops a severe headache since she has diabetes. Jonna assures her that everything will be alright soon. Bree reveals that if her blood sugar levels continue to fall, she will be in a coma. Unfortunately, her insulin injections are in her bag, which is outside the pool, but Jonna keeps encouraging her that she will receive her injection soon. Jonna attempts to widen the hole with a piece of fiberglass but is unsuccessful. Jonna notices her burnt arm and inquires as to how it occurred. Bree tells her that their father was a smoker, and one day when he lit the matchstick, the house caught fire, burning her arm. She goes on to say that their father was always violent to them and their mother and that he was an abusive drunk. Time passes, and it is now night when the girls hear a noise outside the pool. They start screaming for help, but the only person outside the pool is the thief Clara. She notices the two girls in the pool and turns off the camera systems before approaching them. Before setting the girls free, she checks their bags for cash and discovers Bree's phone and credit card. Clara orders Bree to tell her phone's security passcode as well as her credit card pin to exit the pool. Jonna tries to convince Bree that she is deceiving them, but Bree sees Clara as a ray of hope who can help them get out of this hell, so she tells her her passcode and credit card pin. Clara then tells them about her previous criminal record, including how she was arrested for her crimes and how she obtained bail. Having said that, she departs, leaving the girls with the hope that she will return soon after withdrawing the money. The night goes by, but she does not return. Bree's condition is deteriorating, and she requires inulin as soon as possible. Seeing her condition, Jonna feels regret for her actions and apologizes to her, but the elder sister doesn't mind and accepts her apology. They embrace each other throughout the night to achieve the greatest amount of warmth possible. The following morning, Clara returns to the pool. Jonna begs her to set them free or to give her the insulin injection, but she refuses. She yells at them, claiming that Bree's account only has $80 in it, which is insufficient for her to rescue them. She walks away, declaring that it is their fate to pass away in this pool. Jonna pretends to cry hysterically and asks Clara to approach the hole to see what happened. As Clara places her ear in the hole, Jonna stabs her ear with the fiberglass piece, causing her ear to bleed profusely. 
she rushes to a mirror to see her wound, stops her bleeding, and, enraged, she turns on the pool cleaning system, which emits a massive amount of chlorine, and because the pool is closed, the girls will choke on chlorine. The girls beg her to stop, and she agrees after realizing that if the girls die as a result of her actions, she will be imprisoned again, so she turns off the chlorine emission. Clara then orders that they give her their most precious item if they want to exit the pool. Because Brie only has a valuable ring, she hands it to Clara in the hopes that she will set them free, but she once again fools them and flees. Brie's condition has deteriorated so much that she is having hallucinations that David has arrived to rescue them. When she wakes up from this wonderful dream, Jonna is nowhere to be found. Although she, too, is on the verge of passing out in the pool, she swims to find Jonna. Brie discovers her in a pool nook, about to commit suicide. Brie begs her not to do so, but she states that she couldn't ignore the fact that her elder sister is in danger because of her. She adds that she can't stand being in a rehab center away from loved ones any longer. Brie makes it clear to her that she cares for and loves her and will stay with her at their old house together. Hearing this, Jonna agrees not to commit suicide, and the two share an emotional hug. While checking Brie's phone, Clara hears David's audio message that he is going to report his fiancé missing and possibly kidnapped to the police. Clara becomes concerned after hearing this audio message and decides to set the girls free. She tells them that if they do not reveal her identity to anyone, she will release them, and the girls agree without hesitation. The girls are overjoyed when they realize they will be free, but when she enters the code to remove the fiberglass cover from the pool, the code does not work. She informs the girls that McGrady has changed the passcode for the pool administration and that she is no longer able to assist them. Having said that, Clara exits the pool, leaving the girls with no hope of being rescued. Another night passed, and Bree's condition deteriorated to the point where she could die at any moment. She tells Jonna that the night their house caught fire and her arm was burned, she managed to keep their father from fleeing, and he died as a result. She adds that she has no regrets about killing their father, who was a monster to them. Jonna is concerned after seeing Bree's condition and dives deep to pull out the metal gate. Despite numerous attempts, she is still unsuccessful. Following that, she takes Bree's towel and successfully pulls out a piece of the metal gate to use for breaking the fiberglass cover. When she emerges from the water, she is shocked to see Bree unconscious and about to drown in the water. She performs CPR on Bree to bring her back to consciousness. Jonna hits the hole in the fiberglass cover with her remaining strength, and after several attempts, she manages to widen it a little. She wounds her arm to widen the hole enough for them to exit the pool. With her half-conscious sister by her side, Jonna eventually makes it out of the death pool. She quickly administers the insulin shot to Bree but is surprised to see Clara standing in front of them with a gun pointed at them. She tells Jonna that she must kill them or else they will reveal what she has done to them. However, as she is about to shoot them, she feels guilty about her decision and puts her gun down. Later, she gives Bree's engagement ring back to Jonna and gives her a phone to call the rescue teams. Jonna, too, becomes sympathetic and advises Clara to flee before the police arrive. She does so and flees, with Jonna calling for help. The police and ambulance arrive quickly at the pool. Following this, Brie regains consciousness and opens her eyes. The film concludes with Jonna giving Brie her ring back, and the two of them share a hug while crying in relief. If you enjoyed my explanation, please like and share the video. However, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, as this is your own channel. I'll see you soon in my next video. Until then, have fun and keep watching the movie explainer.